Oh, <clears throat> today we're going to start to talk about chapter eight. Okay, so I'm going to probably um, do a couple of videos for each topic, and then so um, the first topic I'm going to do is, um, as you can see, we are going to cover uh, a couple of things. So. We're going to do from circular motion to rotational inertia and then up to actually I'm going to, I'm not going to talk about rotating the reference frames, simulate the gravity, so then we're going to move on to the conservation of angular momentum. But today what I want to talk about is actually um, I'm going to focus on circular motion first and the next video I'm going to do rotational inertia. So think about circular motion. Okay, so so far before we talk about chapter eight, we've been focused on linear motion. Okay, or like, you know, even though it's a curved motion, but still we're not considering rotational uh, of the object at all. But there are a lot of rotational motion actually in our life. You think about some examples you see uh, in the rotation, you know, you can see examples for rotational motion. If you go to a amusement park, so many things are rotating, right? Or if you drive in the car, the wheels are rotating, okay? If you're using a washing machine, okay, it's also rotational motion. So there are lots of rotational motion here in our life. So that's why it's important for us to learn about rotational motion. But think about if you step into a amusement park, think about all the rotational motion you see Actually, there are many of them. Actually, all of them they they are, they are related to what we call circular motion. So something is moving around the circle. Okay. So for something you're very familiar with, I want to take a look at the uh, think about the merry-go-round. When you were a kid, you go to the park and you take a ride on the merry-go-round. And then there are two rides here, A and B. So one is outside, the other one's inside. Most of students would say outside ride is more fun because, you know, it's more exciting. But why? What's the difference between ride A and ride B? Okay, so I'm going to use this as an example to introduce some of the most important concepts uh, for rotational motion. So in order to, if you look at this uh, screen here, okay, when an object turns about an internal axis, it's undergoing circular motion or rotation. So when we talk about rotation of motion, we need to understand, okay, something is rotating relative to an axis. Okay, that's the focus we're gonna focus on. That's, that's the, the thing we're gonna focus on in this chapter. Okay, we're not talking about the fluid. We're talking about rigid bodies. Okay, so internal axis here, so we're talking about, we're referring to rotational axis or axis rotation. So you need to know which one is your axis rotation. And the circular motion is characterized by two kinds of speed. Okay, one is called tangential or linear speed. The other one is called rotational or circular speed. So what's the difference between those two? The first one, tangential speed. The distance traveled by a point on a rotating object divided by the time taken to travel that distance. If you look at my example here, you can see, okay, so for A, right, the A is going to travel from here to here, the whole circumference of the bigger circle. For B, right, it's going to travel from here to here, the smaller circle's circumference. And here in the middle, that's where the axis rotation is located. Okay, so the definition of tangential speed actually is the total distance it traveled divided by the time. Okay, so now we know these two rides are gonna go side by side, right? So once you get started, they're gonna come back to the same position using the same amount of time. So the time is the same, but the distance for A traveled is greater than the distance for B traveled. So that's why the tangential speed of these two rides actually is very different. Okay, so BA actually is greater than BB, right? Because A travels bigger distance. 
So if you look at the slide here, it says the points closer to the circumference have a higher tangential speed that points closer to the center. So here, if you can take a look at here, so this is going to be the outside one actually is going to travel faster than the inner uh, circles. Okay, so that's the tangential speed. And there's another speed which is called rotational speed. Rotational speed sometimes is called angular speed. The angular speed is the number of rotations or revolutions per unit of time. Revolution means, one revolution means one circle. Okay. So rotational speed actually is is defined as we use omega to represent it. Omega, okay, equals total angle. The angle, okay, the number of rotations or revolutions divided by the time. So that's called angular speed. So the angular speed actually sometimes could be in the unit of, this is in the unit of meter per second, as we defined before. This actually is in radian per second. Okay, sometimes could be revolution per second. So one revolution is one, one revolution actually is equals two pi in radian, right? So because one revolution is one circle and one circle is two pi in radian. So we can use um, the total um, radian or total revolution travel divided by the time spent we can find uh, angular uh, speed. Okay, so the angular speed, the, the SI unit actually, it is radian uh, per second. Okay, or sometimes you can see RPM, which is revolution per minute. Okay, everybody should be familiar with this RPM, revolution per minute. That's another unit, but the uh, SI unit is radian per second. So this is rotational speed. Now let's take a look at A and B right again. So they start from here, they go side by side always, and then they come back at the same time. So they, for A and B, they both travel the same angle. Okay. So in fact, sometimes we say this theta actually called angular displacement, angular distance. Divided by the time. So they travel the same angle same time. So the angular velocity or angular speed for both A and B, they should be the same. Okay, so exact the same. So let me rewrite it. So VA is greater than VB. Omega A is the same as omega B. And VA, V actually equals R times omega. Okay. So when, when omega is bigger, V is going to be bigger. When a radius is bigger, V is bigger. So the radius A is greater than radius B, so that's why the tangential speed of A is greater than the tangential speed of B. Okay. When R is zero, of course V is zero. When omega is zero, V is zero as well. Okay. So you can see that, all right, you can see that for, in order to describe rotational motion, we need to use two different kinds of speed. One is called tangential speed, okay? The other one is called angular speed. So for the objects which is rotating, okay, any points on the object, all the points on the object, they are going to have the same angular speed because they're all moving the same angle and over a certain amount of time. So they all have the same angular speed. But for different points, they are gonna have different tangential speed depending on how far that point is away from the axis rotation. So that's the major difference between um, the tangential speed and angular speed. So if you go to, you can try some of these exercises. Uh, <clears throat> to uh, check your understanding, okay? So that's the, this topic, the next topic, I'm going to make another video, talk about rotational inertia.